Of the 7.6 million animals that enter shelters every year, 2.7 million of those are euthanized due to the overpopulation of the animal shelters. This overpopulation is due to the breeders producing too many pets, selling to people who cannot afford pets, so they turn them out to become strays, and people believing that they do not need to spay or neuter their pets. There are many reasons that animals are euthanized. Some have crippling diseases, or they were involved in an accident or suffering, or others are deemed too dangerous to allow into public for issues such as aggression. Euthanasia that occurs in shelters happens one of two ways. They use EBI, or euthanasia by injection. They inject a medicine called sodium pentobarbital, which causes the animal to go to sleep, then causes the organs to shut down. The process is painless and only takes around five minutes to do. Another method is the use of gas chambers. This subject is important to me because I grew up on a farm and I am a big animal welfare person. The statement made by the American Humane Society has helped me to strengthen my opinion that the only way animals should be euthanized is by injection of sodium pentobarbital. Euthanasia by gas chambers does not meet the necessary requirements set by the American Veterinary Medical Association because the animal's death should be delivered quietly and humane humanely. The root definition of euthanasia literally means good death, you meaning goodly and thantos meaning death. Many people will consider the gas chambers to be inhumane due to many reasons. The animals are placed into a dark box and the door is shut and sealed. After the door is closed, someone presses a start button and carbon monoxide begins getting pumped into the chamber. The gas chambers are dark and often smell the animals that were put in there before it. Oftentimes, these animals will be placed into one box, many animals will be placed into the same box, and they will begin fighting out of fear. The use, the use of these carbon monoxide gas chambers leads to acute carbon monoxide poisoning and eventually will lead to death some 20 to 30 minutes later. Now that I have told you about the carbon monoxide gas chamber process, I will tell you about the story of a very fortunate survivor. His name is Daniel. Daniel is now a two-year-old beagle. That is what his new owners named him after he was adopted from a shelter in New Jersey when he was originally in a shelter in Alabama. According to the Mother Nature Network, Daniel was placed into a gas chamber with 17 other dogs when he was just six months old. Daniel was the only survivor. No one knows exactly why Daniel survived, but now Daniel and his owner travel around the country to share Daniel's story and spread the news about this type of inhumane euthanasia. Due to Daniel's story, he has prompted laws in 31 different states about inhumane euthanasia. However, Daniel is not the only dog to have survived the gas chamber. Many different animals have survived, and they can only believe it is due to many different variables, such as age and the concentration of gas. So, unlike the injections, the gas chamber is not 100% effective. Thankfully, Daniel has ex experienced no ill side effects from ex his exposure to the carbon monoxide. Now that I have dis discussed the faults to using the gas chambers, I will finally explain the cost difference and why it is also economically smarter and safer for the injections. EBI has been proven to be the most cost efficient when it comes to euthanizing an animal. When it comes to euthanizing animals, it is best to go with EBI because it costs about $2 less compared to the use of the gas chamber. According to the American Humane Society, do you that gas chamber with carbon monoxide, it will cost around $4.98 per animal and $4.66 without the use of a tranquilizer, not including installation and management cost of the gas chamber. For EBI, it costs around $2.29 per, per animal to use the sodium pentobarbital. Use of the injections can also result in less accidents to the veterinarians or qualified personnel. Since gas chambers use carbon monoxide, there is no way to detect a faulty chamber. Since the gas is colorless and odorless, there is no way to tell if the chamber is leaking until symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are already there. Due to the gas, there has been many instances when the faulty gas chambers have made many employees working sick. There has also been instances where the gas chambers have blown up. Most recently in 2009 in North Carolina, a buildup of gas caused an animal shelter door to blow open. In 2009, a shelter worker in Tennessee was asphyxiated, exfici causing them to die while working a leaking gas chamber. 
To date, there has been no accidents, accidental injections involving someone getting injected with the sodium pentobarbital. Now that I have discussed the ways EBI is a better solution for animal euthanasia, I will talk about things that will not change if we continue to do nothing about the gas chambers. According to the American Humane Society, only around 23 states have outlawed the use of gas chambers for animal euthanasia. Kentucky currently has no legislation banning the use of gas chambers for euthanasia. However, Ohio does currently still use gas chambers to euthanize animals. Animals will continue to be forced into these small chambers, further distressing them when moving them from the shelters to the gas chambers. If we do not move to get a countrywide ban on these gas chambers, animals will continue to be cruelly euthanized, which is not reasonable considering there is a humane and painless option available. We must push for a countrywide ban of these gas chambers. Viewers of this speech will be able to go online and sign petitions to get rid of these gas chambers and only allow euthanasia by an injection of sodium pentobarbital. So out of the 2.7 million animals euthanized every year, by getting rid of the gas chambers, we can make sure the animals go through as little pain as possible during the euthanasia process.